So today, I'm going to review my DNA test results. Something that I've been meaning to do for over a year. So a year ago, December 2017, I did a DNA test and I never published the results. So these results were like nothing I expected. I knew part of my heritage uh, through family, but most of it was definitely a surprise. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to log in to the Ancestry.com website and I'm going to show you my results. Okay, guys, so this is my page on Ancestry.com. Now, by the way, this is not a sponsored video. Okay, uh, the test right now goes for about $59 or $69. And uh, you spit into this vial, you send it in to Ancestry, and within four to five weeks, you get the results. You get an email. Uh, and with that email, there's a link that you can link back to their page and the results are there. So I'm going to go to DNA here, view my DNA results, discover my DNA history. And here it is. This is my DNA history. Now this is a total surprise to me. I'm 30% Portuguese. I never ever would have guessed that I was 30% Portuguese. Spanish, definitely. And I grew up thinking that I was mostly Spanish, if not 100%. But as you can see here, I am definitely uh, very, very mixed, mixed DNA. So. All right, so let's go down the line. So I'm 30% Portuguese, 17% Spanish, 12% England, Wales, Northwest, and Northwestern Europe, 11% Native American, North and Central South American. But as you can see here, I'm also 5% Native American Andean region, which is down here. So Native American, I'm 16% total. If you add the 11% up in north on the north and the 5% in this region, which makes sense uh, because uh, after all, the uh, Taino people of Puerto Rico were Native American. Okay, so all right, so yeah, 11% North Native American, 11 8% Jewish, uh, Eastern uh, European Jewish, according to the map here. Uh, Cameroon, Congo, 3%, Italian, 3%, North Africa, probably Morocco, 2%, and yeah, it is Morocco. So let me go ahead and zoom into the video a little bit. So this is what I see. Uh, so here's my 11% North Native American and 5% South Native American. And either from the north, Florida, or from the uh, this part of South America, Native Americans migrated all throughout the uh, the Antilles, Antilles, uh, or Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba. And all right, let's go to my European ancestry. According to this, let me zoom in a little bit. According to this, I'm 47% Iberian Peninsula. But if you split that up, I'm 30% Portuguese and 17% Spanish. So that was definitely a surprise. I never saw that coming. And I'm 12% Northwestern European, meaning 
uh, parts of Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, northern uh, France, and England, and 2% French. But the French part is also covered here, northern, northern France, which makes sense because according to my family on my father's side, specifically my father and my uncle, our, my great-great-grandfather did come from France. And therefore, that's how I got my last name, Duran. So that makes total sense right there. So uh, they were telling me the truth. I, I always had doubts, but yeah, it appears that uh, definitely my last name came from this area. So it, it, this tells me that my uh, great-great-grandfather, who moved to Puerto Rico a very long time ago, and married a Spanish lady, not a Puerto Rican lady, a Spanish lady. And uh, obviously they had kids and, uh, uh, you know, the Duran name is spread all over Puerto Rico now. And uh, yeah, but I had no idea uh, that I was, you know, basically from this area. So that was, that was a surprise. Uh, Italian, I'm 3% Italian. Um, here it shows that I'm 8% European Jewish from this region. Uh, but as we know, most of this region is Christian anyway. And Jewish is not necessarily a, uh, uh, a race or anything like that. It's a religion. So I don't know how they came up with that number. I'm not going to take a survey. Oh. Okay, and yeah, I'm even 1% Russian. Yeah, maybe that's why I like vodka a little bit, but just a little bit. I don't drink that much. And 1% Swedish and 2% North African, probably from Morocco, which makes sense because it's r right near uh, Spain. Okay, so going down south to Africa. 2% Senegal, Senegal, 1% Mali, 1% Benin, Togo, and 3% Cameroon from this area. So, yeah, that's v definitely very, very interesting. There's a lot of surprises here. All my life, I thought I was 100% Spanish. I mean, I've heard stories about being um, that most Puerto Ricans have... Uh, part Native American uh, ancestry because when the Spanish came down to uh, Puerto Rico, they immediately, pretty much immediately started marrying um, Native American women. And as we know, the reason this European DNA can be explained is that, as we know, the Spanish did allow anyone to board their ships for, to the New World as long as they um, swore loyalty to the Spanish crown and or were Catholic. If you were Catholic, it doesn't it didn't matter where from in Europe you were, uh, you were allowed to migrate to one of the uh, Spanish territories in the New World. So yeah, uh, how about that? I have DNA from just about everywhere in Europe but uh, yeah there is a, a lot of big all, all of this is a surprise to me uh, Portugal uh, England Germany northern France Belgium the Netherlands Wow and in this this as well so obviously some of my ancestors came from Eastern Europe and maybe a couple came from Russia Obviously, because of that 1%, 1% in Sweden, that's kind of like a low number. But definitely, uh, this region is where my ancestors come from, this entire region. Pretty much all of Western Europe and part of Eastern Europe. Very, very interesting. So, yeah, imagine, and, and I'm just one person living in, uh, from Puerto Rico with Puerto Rican roots. Imagine all the other Puerto Ricans, any, anyone living, not just Puerto Rico, but uh, the, um, all the Hispanic countries in South America. 
they have uh, varied uh, DNA and most people just don't know like I like I did I, I, I didn't know I had no idea so um, oh by the way my wife did the same test and uh, let me show you in her case she's as, as most of you know she's from Peru my wife is from Peru migrated to the US back in 81 or 82 um, and her results were different than mine in her case she was 50% Native American, mostly from this area of Peru. So she is the descendant of the Inca, the Inca Empire. And a quarter percent French and a quarter percent Spanish. Uh, so yeah, she has three major groups. So uh, that was uh, a little shocking too because I had no idea that my wife was a quarter percent French. So one of her grandparents definitely had uh, has French blood and she's from this uh, region but her parents are from Chiclayo uh, which is up here in the north in another town nearby which I can't remember but uh, yeah that's uh, uh, very uh, interesting so yeah I don't know what to say about all this you know I'm still shocked about it so Portuguese I guess I'm gonna have to uh, if I'm mostly Portuguese, I'm going to have to learn Portuguese then. So, I mean, por por Portuguese, the Portuguese language is very similar to Spanish. Um, and similar, very, uh, even more similar to the, the Gallegos language from uh, northwestern uh, Spain. It's, they're almost identical. So, as you know, Spain has four languages. Castilian, which is what I speak. And as er everyone knows, it's Spanish, but there's also Catalan, um, Gallegos, and Basque from the Basque region here in uh, northern Spain and southern France. So, yeah. Oh, and there's one more, guys, I forgot to mention. Ireland, Scott, Wales, 1%. You already know about Russia and Sweden, but uh, I forgot to mention Ireland. I mean, that's definitely not a lot, but uh, yeah, maybe that explains why I like whiskey. Well, not a whole lot either, like vodka, you know, uh, just a little bit, just enough to, uh, to be merry and slightly happy. So this is what it looks like. And... This is what they discovered. You see this right here? For some reason, somehow, they know that I originated in Puerto Rico, specifically northwestern Puerto Rico, like Aguadilla, Isabela, San Sebastián. Uh, and that is definitely true. And when I send in my spit or my saliva, in that little vial that I that I mailed to them, I gave them absolutely no information whatsoever, just my name and an address, here in New Jersey, and from that saliva they were able to determine all that, and not only that they were able to um, connect me to family members in Puerto Rico. Their their DNA matches mine which is amazing um, and that, that was definitely shocking so I, I discovered that uh, uh, some of my uncles and aunts and, and cousins uh, those that did the DNA test through Ancestry they were matched to my DNA so wow I, I am definitely um, I'm happy finally to know um, what my DNA or where my DNA comes from. Um, I'm, I'm glad to know my ancestry, so yeah. All right guys, so what do you think about the results? Have you done a DNA test as well? Okay, what I got here is a uh, Puerto Rican treasure. A, uh, well, I'm not gonna say it, but if you know what this is, let me know in the comments below and tell me not only the name but what is it used for and where so yeah
I can't play. Now, this instrument comes from my uh, uncle. Uh, uh, his name is uh, Almon Valentin, and he lives in a beautiful town of Aguadilla, Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, which is on the uh, western side of the island, on the western coast by the, uh, by the sea. So, yeah. I've been meaning to learn how to play, but due to the lack of time, and not able to find an instructor, so I just haven't had the chance to learn. But yeah, eventually I will, hopefully soon. All right guys, on a final note, knowing how complicated and diverse Puerto Rican DNA is, my question to you is, are Puerto Ricans superhuman? <laughs>